a lot of the pressure that we have, we feel like we have to talk to them, share the gospel, pray with them, get them saved, and invite them to church and make them a Christian all in one setting. It's not microwave. It's slow cooking. It takes time. We don't have to do things all at once. How many of you have ever witnessed to somebody and bombed? Bombed, you just didn't do well. <laughs> or you shared your faith that turned into a debate. Yep. And uh, yeah, same with me. When I, was, when I first became a Christian, um, I just started, I was engaged to Deborah. And, you know, most mother-in-laws are like, oh, welcome to the family meal. Oh, welcome. Not Deborah's mother-in-law. Deborah's mother-in-law was completely different. She was a little fiery redhead. So I'm going to see what this man is all about. So she, would, she, she asked me three questions. The first question was, do you have any money? <laughs> no, I don't have any money. Strike one. Are you, and then there's the next question. Are you a Democrat or Republican? I'm a conservative. Strike two. And this, this is her last question. Are you a Catholic or what? I said, no, I'm a Christian. That's the worst one. <laughs> and she's like, I don't like him. I don't like him. And she didn't like me for a long time. And, and, and even when we got married, she, she would, when she gave, you know, when you, you walk your bride down, they walk the bride down the aisle and they give you to the groom. She, she, she didn't say congratulations, nothing. She said this, fine, you won. <laughs> That's what she said. And then I thought, I'm going to win her to Christ. She became a mother-in-law. And then I was like, so I'd hear messages from here, and then I would go try to preach to her. And it didn't work. All we did is get in fights. And we would just fight. We'd argue. She'd kick me out of her house. She didn't want to hear me. And it, was, it just went, it went really well. She would, <laughs> she would say things that, well, if it wasn't for the Virgin Mary, there would be no Jesus. And I was like, well... She's not a virgin anymore. <laughs> and, oh, she kicked me out. Oh, she got mad. I know. It wasn't tactful, but that's what I said. I'd say things like just to jab her. And it, it didn't go very well. And it, I'm, I've had, you know, maybe you've had stories like that. And we have stories like that because we read that God commands us to do it, so we do it and we fail. In, 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 Jesus, in Matthew 28, 19, Jesus commanded, it said, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always and even into the end of the world. We read that and we're like, okay, I have to go, I have to do this, and then we bomb and we fail. Because no one really taught us how to do this. And because if we bombed, we fail, we're like, okay, this is not for me. This is for somebody else. I'm just not going to do it. And, or we disqualify ourselves from doing that because we just think we're not that type of person. And we're just, we, I have too many flaws, too many weaknesses, and this is, you know, this is not for me. And the thing you got to realize is God will call you even though you have flaws and weaknesses. I have flaws and weaknesses, and I'm up here. I told, the, I told the media team, okay, put a few of my flaws and weaknesses so everybody sees, so, they're, you know, so they don't feel bad about themselves. And <laughs> I said a few of them. You have to put a whole book. Undisciplined, vague, <laughs> deferring work. Okay, take, put them down, put them down. They don't need to see those anymore. Or you're just going to leave them up. For everybody to see, okay, I hope it makes you feel better. Those are mine. But we look at, we have these flaws, we have these weaknesses, and we think, oh, I, I'm disqualified. You know, Moses was the most insecure person, and God still called him. God still called him, and he even tried to convince God he, this is not for him. When God called him, when God, at the burning bush, he was talking to Moses, and he said, Moses, my people are slaves. And Moses, yes, Lord, they're slaves. Moses, I'm going to 
take them to their own land. Oh, preach it. Oh, preach it. Our own land. Yes, Lord. I'm going to send a deliverer. Yes, send your deliverer. And it's you. No, no, not me. Not me. I'm the last person. He even says, Lord, I can't speak. I talk too slow. I'm hesitant of speech. I have an Espanol accent. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm from Espanola. I can say that. And that's what Moses tried to, tried to convince God. He couldn't. And God said, take your insecurities and go because I am with you. God uses people who are insecure. God uses people, the most unlikely person. Who in here says, I am the last person God can use, should use? You know what? Congratulations, because if you're the most unlikely person God can use, you've, you are more qualified to be used of God because God specializes in unlikely people. How many, how many of you have been broken? Say, oh, I can't be used of God because I'm broken. I'm just, you know, I, I get your pain. But broken people can be used of God because they can see Jesus through your brokenness. God uses insecure people, broken people, the most unlikely person. God will use anybody. God has a plan and a destiny. And we hear that and we think, okay, this is cliche-ish. You know, and it's true. It's up to you to exercise that plan. That's your call, your decision. But here's the, the mistake we make. God has a plan. God has a destiny for you. And we start working towards that plan. We start working towards that destiny. And we go, okay, it's between me and God. We're going to move forward for this. And here's the mistake you're going to make. You'll never be fulfilled and you'll never find your destiny. Because you're making it a one-way street. And you don't realize that your fulfillment and your destiny comes through another, another avenue you didn't know. And that is through others, through witnessing through loving your neighbor as yourself. And we don't realize that through that avenue, God will actually fulfill and bring our destiny. But we make it about this and not the, the plan that God has for you, and we miss out. And when he doesn't meet our expectation, we go back to living to the things that we want and the only things that we care about. How many of you have ever seen that, that, the, the movie The Karate Kid? Not the new one where that seven-year-old beats up high school kids. I'm talking about the old one in the 80s. Mr. Miyagi. Yeah, that's the better one, right? That's a great movie because Daniel LaRusso, the karate kid, he wants to learn karate because he's getting beat up. He's like, Mr. Miyagi, teach, teach me karate. And he's like, okay, go wash my car. <laughs> wash my car. Wax on, wax off, go. And he's like, fine. He's like, wax on, wax off. Now teach me karate. No, go paint the fence. Up, down, up, down. Okay, now teach me karate. No, go sand the floor. Big circle, sand the floor, sand the floor. Big circle, sand the floor. Okay, so now what? Go paint, go paint the house. Side, 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 side. Paint the house. I go fishing, you paint house. He's like, wait, what about me? I want to go fishing. I thought you were supposed to teach me karate. You're teaching me karate, I'm your slave. Forget this, I don't want this, I'm out of here. Then you son, come here. <laughs> what? Look, I always look, I <laughs> look, show me sand the floor. Ah, sand the floor. <laughs> sand the floor. Oh, yeah. Big circle. Hey, hey. Now show me wax on, wax off. <laughs> now, <laughs> do it right. Wax on, wax off. Show me paint the house. Paint side to side. La Christ, la Christ, show me, paint the fence. And he goes through all this stuff. And then Mr. Miyagi's like, all right. And he gets ready, and Mr. Miyagi's going to throw a bunch of punches and kicks. His little legs. 
And Daniel LaRusso's all oh, blocking everything. He's like, whoa, I know karate. I know karate. Holy smokes. This whole time he was learning karate and he didn't even know it. This whole time God was leading, not God, Nyagi <laughs> was leading to do something. And he didn't know that he was teaching them in that whole moment. And that's the same thing with God in your destiny. This whole time we make it just about this and we just make it about ourselves. And we don't realize that the fulfillment and the destiny God has for you that God will bring you and give you is through others. You just have to, you just have to step out of your bubble, step out in faith. I passed all my notes, that's okay. <laughs> but we get embarrassed, we feel like I don't wanna be rejected but you gotta care more about people's salvation. What if you had the cure for cancer, but you just kept it to yourself? What if the greatest act of love and kindness would be to go to that person who's sitting in the hospital with cancer, and they tell you, I found the cure, and what, did you think, what would you think that person would do? It'd be, you would change their world completely. You and I are comforted. We're saved. We're going to heaven. We're free. Listen to what James, this is what, what uh, Pastor Daniel just said. To him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him is it a, it's a sin. What about your neighbor? Are you loving your neighbor as yourself? This is what Charles Spurgeon said. He was the most, winning, most soul winning pastor in his time. If you have no wish for others to be saved, then you, then, you're, then you are not saved yourself. But here's the thing here's the good news. We don't have to do what I did with my mother in law, we don't have to go through our past experiences of failure. You can win people to Christ, but there's a way to do it. You can share your faith without fear or without fear of being a weirdo, okay? So before you leave, I wanna give you some tools on how to connect with, with others and to make the, the hard simple, okay? A simple way to do this. Don't make it hard, don't put pressure on yourself. Last week, Pastor talk, talked about the woman at the well. The woman at the well just had a experience, a moment with Jesus. She, he just revealed who he was to her. He told her about her life. She was transformed. She was healed. And Jesus turned her into a little evangelist. This to, in John 4, 28. So right after she, her encounter with Jesus, this is what she does, and this is what you and I should do. Verse 28. So the woman left her water jar and went away into the town and said to the people, come See a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? Then they went out of the town and they were coming to him. People came because of why. She simply shared her story and invited them to come. But what if they asked me questions? What did Jesus do for you? Share what Jesus did for you. I was blind, but now I see. That's it. What if they ask me the theological, I don't know, just come and see. I know what Jesus did for me, just come and see. How long did she know Jesus? How much does she know about Jesus? He's the Messiah. How many Bible verses does she know? How many does she have memorized? Does she have a degree in theology? Does she give a PowerPoint presentation? Does she get her little box and stand on the box and tell them, you're all sinners and going to hell? No. This is what Jesus did for me. Come and see. That's it. I got one person over here. Yeah. Bless your heart. That's it. But while she was doing that, this is what I want you to get. While she was evangelizing and she was in Samaria bringing people, Jesus is having a conversation with the disciples. He's like, listen. 
you guys have a saying. You guys are all farmers. You guys have a saying. And this is your, your, your saying. This is what you say. John uh, 4.35. Don't you have a saying, he says, it's four months till harvest time. Don't you guys say that? It's four months till harvest time. You guys say it a bunch. It's four months till harvest time. Why do you say that? Because good things take time. That's what he's saying. But why did he say good things take time? Because in John 4.37, it says, one sows, another reaps. He's talking about evangelism. A lot of the pressure that we have, we feel like we have to talk to them, share the gospel, pray with them, get them saved, and invite them to church and make them a Christian all in one setting. It's not microwave. It's slow cooking. It takes time. We don't have to do things all at once. It's one step at a time, one ingredient at a time. There is a, when you're harvesting, that's a time. Farmers know there's a time to plant, there's a time to water, there's a time for growth, more water, and then harvest. That's evangelism. You just have to know what point in an area a person's at. Are they on harvest time, watering time, planting time? Where are they at? That's the Holy Spirit giving you discernment. What is he discerning for you to tell that person? Maybe they're not ready for the gospel. Maybe they just need encouragement. Maybe they need something from you that you can give if you listen to the Holy Spirit. It's something that you have to discern when it's a seed moment time, when it's a watering time, when it's harvest time. Sometimes I harvest, somebody else sowed. Sometimes somebody else is harvesting what I've sowed. That's what Jesus was saying. It's, that's a, don't put the pressure on yourself. Just know and listen to the Holy Spirit what they need. That is simple. Tell them what Jesus did for you and invite them. And know what, what time of harvest it is. Here's the next thing. You feel like you have to do things alone? No, you don't. You don't have to do things alone. There's beauty in partnership. You can partner up with somebody. I used to ask guys, come and have coffee with me. I, got I want to talk to this guy about Jesus or invite him to church. And we, we you know, we, we, we tag team. Tag team. I don't know what that song. I don't know why that came to my brain. But listen to the beauty in partnership. A lame man healed, Acts 3, verse 1 through 6. Now Peter and John went up together, teammates, to the temple at the hour of prayer in the ninth hour. A certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask for alms from those who enter the temple, who sing Peter and John, that they are together, about to go into the temple and ask for alms. And fixing his eyes on him, on, P on John and Peter, said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from heaven. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth, rise up and walk. What a great story, right? Here's the thing, Peter and John, those guys were polar opposites. Sometimes when I invite people, it's somebody who knows the Bible more than I do, or is more compassionate than me, or is more influential than I am. You gotta find a teammate. Peter and John, are you serious? John is the one who wrote about himself. I'm the one who Jesus loved. I put, and he writes that he put his head on his bosom. John liked to cuddle. Hi, Jesus. That's John. <laughs> what about Peter? Who's Peter? He'll cut your ear off. <laughs> That's Peter. He'll cut your ear off. John shows his love for God through compassion. Peter shows his love through courage. Two different people. They are working together. And when you know when they were going to the, table, the temple, Peter didn't notice them. John is probably the one that noticed them. Peter, Peter. Peter's like, dude, you're going to lose your man card. <laughs> Stop it. 
help Peter. Ugh. And it says he stared at him. Dude, get up. Get up or I'll cut your ear off. You know, that's Peter. Two different people, but they worked as a team. Don't feel like you have to go at this alone. You go together. Travis Ogle and, and his wife, Kathy, used to do this when they used to, and, you know, when the Mormons knock at your door. One would talk and witness, and the other would be praying in the Spirit. And then one, the other one would talk, and the other one would be praying in the Spirit. One could send 1,000, two could send 10,000. Partnership. Here's the next one. Build a bridge, don't burn one. Oh, they should make don't do what Joe does bracelets. <laughs> D-D-W-J-D. <laughs> don't do what Joe does I've burnt bridges, I've gotten fights, uh, verbal fights. I don't get in fights anymore. First Peter 3.15, but respect Christ as, holy, as the holy Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to answer everyone who asks you to explain the hope that you have. In high school, I used to hate pop quizzes or tests because I wasn't ready. It's like, all right, we're having a test. Test! Who said? Test! Did you know we're having a test? Oh, blankety, blank, blank. Test. That's, yeah, that's the old joke, because I don't do that now. So. But be ready. You don't know when this test is coming. It's coming, but be ready, it says, in all seasons, all times. A lot of people say, because here's how you burn a bridge. You burn a bridge by trying to be Tell people about Jesus, but your life does no, shows nothing. There's nothing you do in your lifestyle that, that shows it. It's contradictory. You burned a bridge. Or I've heard people say, well, I'm just going to live for Jesus with so much conviction, conviction that they'll ask me about Jesus. And a lot of times they don't. But Jesus didn't do that. Jesus didn't say, I came so, to live by example. He did both. He lived by example and by explanation. And you and I have to have tact. Tact, the ability to make a point without making an enemy. It's not one size fits all in your situation. Sometimes it's, it's the same message all the time. And you gotta change it like Jesus did. Jesus was once, he was one way to the woman at the well. He wasn't the same way with the woman caught in adultery. And he wasn't the same way with Nicodemus as he was with the rich young ruler. And he wasn't the same way with Zacchaeus. He was different in all situations. And that's when, you, when you're just one size fits all, you're just burning a bridge. Here's the next one and the last one. Connect people to your story. You have a story how you came to Christ. Well, it's not a great one. I didn't go to jail and get shot three times. You don't need to. Whatever your story is, it's powerful. I overcame them. We overcame them by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Your testimony, your story is important. But don't do what Nacho Libre does. You ever seen that movie? Don't embellish your story. When I was in the wilderness. What? When I was in the wilderness, I made a song for Encarnacion. <laughs> and the fantasy is over. <laughs> he starts singing, what are you doing? <laughs> just tell your story. <laughs> it's just a simple story. It's powerful. And here's your story in a nutshell. I was blind, I had a past, but because of Jesus, now I see I was going to heaven, now, I, mean, I was going to hell, but now I'm going to heaven because of what Jesus did for me. That's it. That's your story in a nut nutshell. hundred words or less, you write your story into that. When you write your story, don't make your past better than your present. Oh, when I was, oh man, when I was out there, I had three houses and money and yachts and cars and women, and now I just sacrifice. For Jesus. 
kind of story is that? Just <laughs> a sacrifice. I live in a one bedroom apartment all by myself. And here's the other thing take out the Christian lingo. You know, Christian lingo is I was washed by the blood. I'm in Jesus now, Jesus is in me. I've been circumcised. What? You've been what? You're going to scare people, washed by the blood. So what is that? You know what that is, but people don't. It's a different world out there. They don't know washed by the blood and circumcised. What is that? Here, I'm going to alienate some people right now. Okay, we're all going to participate. All right? If you know this song, sing it. All right? You ready? You got to participate. You going to participate? All right, okay, all right. Okay, if you know it, you got to sing it. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay from the cross to the grave. Yeah. Yeah. He even kept it high, high. Some of you are like, oh, Jesus just came in the place. Oh, hallelujah. Others are like, what? What are you, what are you singing? It was spiritual to you, but to the others, we're like, what? Okay, I'll do another one. All right. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. If you know it, sing it. Oh, my voice. Sweet Caroline. <laughs> good times never seem so good. <laughs> you guys are heathens. You know where you've been? I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> okay, one more. I, this has nothing to do with the message now. Oh, I'm halfway there. Oh, live it. Take my hand. Oh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, oh, now I felt Jesus. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Pastor Steve. I'm sorry. <laughs> what's, what's my point? You alienate people. They, oh, some people know it, some people don't. But here's the thing that connects people when you write your story. People know about setbacks. They know about loneliness, rejection, failure. They know about those things. Maybe not your failure, but they experience failure. And when you say, I've been, I was like this, but now I, this happened to me because of Jesus, that connects people. You, sh you share your story and invite them. Here, here's the, here's the, where's the prayer? Oh, okay. All right, they didn't come out. <laughs> I, in their notes, it's gospel in a nutshell. Seven points. Memorize them, take, them, take a picture and put them in your phone and memorize these. God loves humanity, number one. He loves everyone. But all have sinned and been separated for God, from God. Sin separates you from God. Darn it, you guys heard me. But we cannot get to heaven based on our own goodness. Number four, God loved us, so he sent Jesus. He was born a, a born a baby, lived our life, died our death, took our sin on him and rose again, and he stands at the door and knocks. Memorize that, because you may present that one day when it's time to harvest. But I'll close with this. The Holy Spirit is the, the main thing, the first thing that you do to rely when it comes to ministering to people. When I got into my car after I've argued with my, my future mother-in-law, the Holy Spirit put this in my heart, stop it. Instead, pray for her in the Spirit. So I stopped and I prayed for her in the Spirit. And I, and I just stopped, but I would pray for her. Her harvest time came months later and she, and she said, tell me about Jesus.
I want Jesus in my heart. Will you pray with me? Best words I've ever heard. And I prayed with her. Weeks later, she passes away. But God used me in that moment, and I'm so grateful. Because you never know when God's going to use you. You just have to be ready for this. I like, this is the last thing. I like this uh, really smart attorney had, was hiring this younger attorney. And he said, son, what are you going to do with your life? He says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make lots of money. I'm going to marry a beautiful woman and have some kids. He said, and then what? Well, and then I'm going to have my own firm, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have some houses and, and buy a yacht. And then what? And then I have, well, have some grandkids. Grandkids and then retire and enjoy my life. And then what? I don't know. Just, I'll die. And the smart attorney said, and then what? I don't know. He said, son, if you ain't ready to die, you ain't ready to live. You got to be ready to die, and then you can live. Let's, pray. Let's bow your heads. Father, I thank you so much. Father, I thank you for everybody in the room. I want to pray for everybody who's been, been believing their family member or their friend to be saved. If you are, would you slip your hand up so I know that you're believing? Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, I, those people that slip their hand up, Father, I pray for them, for their family member or their friend to be saved. And this year, Father, this will be the year of the, their harvest, Father. We pray for their harvest in Jesus' name. And I thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep your heads bowed, and I just want to pray and give you an opportunity. If you don't know Jesus and you want me to pray for you, I'll pray for you. If you want, I'll pray for me so I can invite Jesus in my heart and my life. If you do, would you slip your hand up so I could see you, and I'll pray for you. I see your hand. God bless you. Look across. I see your hands. God bless you. There's a bunch in that section. Just want to make sure I don't miss anybody. I saw you. Over there, I see you. God bless you. Those that raise your hand, say this prayer after me. When you say it, this is your personal prayer to Jesus. Say, Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe you are the Son of God who died on a cross and was raised from the dead to give me life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Congratulations.